Oh my god. What am I doing? Hi, welcome to Just Thinking Out Loud. My name is Desiree. There are a couple of things that I would like to talk about. The first of those is Kyle Kashuv and him saying the n-word another thing i want to talk about is trump's deportation plans deciding to enforce current immigration law which is basically what he's trying to do and then the third thing i want to talk about was a very sad incident with the cops in phoenix where a family their daughter their daughter was stealing a doll like a dollar value a doll valued at a dollar from a dollar store and then the cops were treating the family horribly absolutely horribly and threatening to put a cap in one of in the woman's head the mom's head and also lying on their statements about the, the family being aggressive and when no they were actually the ones being aggressive so I want to talk about that and the narratives surrounding that as well so first talking about the situation with Kyle Kyle rose into the public limelight because he was one of the survivors of the Parkland shooting he was a survivor of a mass shooting at his high school and instead of coming out on the side of gun more gun laws he was on the side of pro second amendment and not for added gun laws so he was the opposite of David Hogg and kind of rose into the spotlight on the conservative right-wing side of the political debate so that's how he became famous and then what happened was that he had really good grades and he got accepted into Harvard however it was found out that he had made some comments uh, in private to some of his friends using racial slurs specifically the n-words he also it seemed to be some some anti-semitism as well but most people were focusing on him saying the n-word when he was younger I think he was about 16 I'm not sure and uh I remember when this story first came out, there were some people who were, I think his classmates, saying that everybody was behaving as if Kyle was this amazing saint-like person. However, no, he actually isn't this saint-like person that he now is portraying himself to be. That's what they were saying. And so some people dug up this part of his past and blasted it. And I've seen different very different feedback people seem to have different opinions about it some people thought that hey now there's this racist how how could this guy some people are like he's a kid he was just saying something stupid and then some people are like something stupid it wasn't just something stupid it was way more than that and so there are two things i want to point out about the situation the first one is something i always say i think that if this word is going to be a bad word it should just be a bad word universally so it can't be that some people say it in some songs. It either has to have a certain connotation within the American and also worldwide since it's, it's pretty much exported from America in the American vocabulary or not. And I'm aware that people might be mad at me for thinking that, but I've always thought it. I will always think it. I think, why is it such a big deal? I know the answer will be, well, because of the history of the word, it was used when black people were slaves being torn away from their families you know just slavery as it has ex as it has existed in many other parts of the world as well not just in the u.s and not just to black people either even though and it's still going on today i was gonna say even though in most recent history but it's still going on today being perpetuated by other black people that's often quote unquote black people that's often the case there was a tweet going around where someone was saying, when are you able to say the words? And I just think it's foolish to try to put your vision of the world onto everybody else because maybe that person grew up in a certain place where that word was used a lot. So what, they're just supposed to abandon that part of their culture to please some random person on the internet? Like the, the social sanction, sanctions, I love saying that word for some reason, the social sanctions surrounding that word differ too much for everyone to feel exactly the same way about it every single time. And so I think that just needs to be sorted out. I'm aware that my opinion on the topic might be unique. However, that's what I think. That's what I've always thought. And that word is just given way too much power and the same standard has to apply. Take it out of your music lyrics. I know you're trying to reappropriate the word. I think it's a bad idea, personally. And I'm aware that some people would be very mad at me for saying that, but that's what I think. I don't like the word. I don't use it except for like when I'm trying to talk about something like this. And I, I think I'm still trying to avoid saying it anyway. Um, and I will point out that I'm speaking for myself. 
I am an immigrant and I'm not speaking for all immigrants because some of them come here and then they adopt this way of thinking, but I don't have the same emotional attachments that a lot of people have towards not just this word, but these issues in general. I do have emotional triggers and things that bother me, but it's just not in this way. So I can almost see it from the outside because I understand what it's like to have something really hurt you but because I wasn't raised to look at those things, I see it very differently where this word is just given way, way too much power. And it's just perpetuated whenever people have this outrage over it. And it also makes it hard to have any discussions and to potentially heal American wounds, which I'm not trying to do at all, but maybe there's a way to do it. But if there's just outrage whenever someone says a certain thing, then all you're doing is perpetuating the existing conditions. The other thing regarding Kyle Kashov, I hope I said his name right, and the N-word is that oftentimes we look to a certain person or personality or historical figure in admiration because they did something that supports a cause that we believe for. However, that doesn't mean that we should put them on a pedestal with Martin Luther King, for example. He cheated on his wife. I think it's a logical fallacy to assume that just because someone is highly virtuous in, say, one area of their life, what we would consider virtuous because we can't agree on that. You know, like some people, if someone, whatever cause, you don't have to be right wing or and specifically support cash up to get what I'm saying. Anyone you can think of, you don't actually know what they've done in their life. You don't know if they really uphold everything that you would stand for if you were to see all their actions over time. So I think the fact that people like that classmate was like, oh, he's not this sane as he's making himself out to be. I don't think that detracts from his, I don't think this area of his life detracts from what he has done in this other area of his life that you think is good. And I know people want people to have that quality to them, but I think that's asking a lot of any human being. I'm not saying there aren't people who could, in this specific instance, not have done what Kyle did. Yes, I, I, I personally have never said that word. I'm also not from this background, but I've never like said that word. I've never even really, not even to my friends, like only when I'm talking about it, like something like this. And I do have friends who do use that word and I just don't because I just don't like it. So I'm not saying that he couldn't have done it for this specific instance. However, maybe not think about him saying the N-word specifically, but something else that you probably wouldn't have liked. I think it's an unfair standard to have of people that just because they're put into the spotlight, that means that they're going to be perfect. I think that's not a good thing. I also want to be clear that I don't have special authority to talk about this just because of my skin color. I think that's a stupid argument that you can't talk about something even though it's affecting you in your daily life. If you're on the online social media world or just living in say American society or elsewhere around the world sometimes there can be social awkwardness surrounding these topics because you you can't ever there's propaganda being pushed in your face about it but you can't necessarily talk about it I think that's not right so I don't have special authority to talk about this just because of how I look so that's what I think about that and then specifically about Harvard deciding to rescind his offer I think that I probably would let it slide if I were Harvard, if not for the fact that I did read that they do do this regularly and it's not just something that they're doing with Kyle. So I think due to that, I think that they are being consistent. I did tweet about that. Um, so I'm, I can't be upset with them for trying to make an example out of him because it doesn't seem like he's the only person that's been done to. I think he just has to accept that and maybe reapply somewhere else where they will be able to accept him in the future and he can take a gap year or something. I think it kind of sucks. I don't really think it's the right way to go. And I think this kind of outrage culture over super sensitive social topics will mean that those super sensitive social topics will probably never get solved or it will take a long time for them. And then talking about Trump deciding to enforce immigration law and one, start deportation procedures for people. This is something that has happened under other administrations as well, not just the Trump administration. It's a big deal because this was one of Trump's major campaign issues. So he's finally, at least he's trying to make good on that. 
And that involves deportation procedures. And two, it also involves for legal immigrants, not just illegal immigrants, them following the contract that they signed up for when they were allowed to begin the process of obtaining citizenship through permanent residency and the green card system they have. So a lot of people would come over and then use welfare when they're not supposed to do that because the way it works is that you have a sponsor that's not just anyone who likes someone can just say hey we'll foot the bill for you if you come but that's usually through family or employment but if that person the immigrant who's coming over isn't able to support themselves which they should be that's part of the stipulation but if they're not then their sponsor will then cover them so that they don't have to depend on other taxpayers because that's what welfare is. You are depending on other taxpayers. And uh, there are different arguments surrounding that. I'm not getting into that issue, but the point is that he's trying to make it so that you follow the law. Now, I personally think that U.S. immigration law is not great and I'm not against immigration, obviously, because of who I am. And I know some people are, but just saying... It's not that great. I think it makes it so that people want to come in illegally. I also think they have incentive to, specifically because of the Democrats who are seem to be really against the law instead of just trying to change it so it works better and don't want to have just rules that make sense in general. And I think that if you came over to the U.S. and you decided that you weren't going to respect the law, then even when that law changes, possibly in your benefit, you're still not going to respect the law. Because if you can say, well, I don't like it, it's not great, so I'm just going to bypass it, then I think even when it gets better, you're still going to have that mindset because it's probably never going to be exactly what you want it to be. So even though I think that the law should change, I think that respecting the law is very important. It's also entirely unfair to people who do it the right way, and there are people who do it the right way. So that's something that actually really pisses me off about the whole democratic platform of getting upset at people who are upset about illegal immigration because well there are people who do it right and that's just not fair and I'm not saying that I am not saying that people who come to the U.S. legally have more of a right not more of a right have more of a desire have more of a human just existing right to be in the country like but rules exist for a reason you have to play fair i would almost say no i can't say that (laughs) i was gonna say that i would almost say that you're oppressing the legal immigrants by currying so much up to illegal immigrants but i probably shouldn't say that so i think it's a really good thing that's what i think about that however i do hope that they try to make it better. Also with the issue with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC, talking, referring to detainment centers as concentration camps, first saying that she wasn't trying to bring up imagery of Nazism, but then it turns out that she was. With her doing that, I think that was really bad. And these issues, these issues that people tear into your feelings about their real issues usually like you want you don't want to separate families and you want them to be treated well but you can't just go on your feelings and that i think is one of the primary differences between say people on the left and people on the right um and i know that there are people in between who fall in between but one of the primary issues i see for all these activist types who are usually on the left is that they're focused on just the emotions and like the tragedy of the people, but then they don't want to look at the data. Like, well, if you're able to come all the way there, are you really someone who's just seeking refugee uh, refugee status? Like, no, you're specifically going to a certain country because you want to be there. It's not just you're in a dire situation. And you know what? That's okay. But the way that everybody else does that is through the proper channels, not just trying to go an easy route. And yes, they are kind of competing for it. There are only a certain number of visas available per year. You have to go through the visa process to get to the green card process. You don't just get a green card or become a citizen. You have to get a visa, then green card, then citizenship. So it's just not fair. 
And I'm glad that laws are being enforced and I hope that they can discuss how to enforce laws rather than discuss how to ignore the laws that already exist and disrespect current immigration law. So I think it's great that he's beginning the deportation process for many illegal immigrants. And I also think it's great that he's trying to enforce the law considering welfare use for legal immigrants as well. And if people want to debate those things, then they should do it properly, even if it takes some time, because the law must mean something or what's the point in having it and then you're being unfair to people who do decide to follow it so the final thing that i want to talk about was the issue with the cops in phoenix and how horribly they were treating that family and the narrative surrounding that i'm going to keep it really short i think that incident was horrible it was absolutely horrible i think it's fortunate that i think it's her boyfriend or husband I'm not sure I think it's fortunate that someone was there to film the cops and to film what was going on because it's clear that they lied in their statements and they tried to put the blame on her they were totally out of line and out of order however I don't think that automatically has to tie into the Black Lives Matter narrative I don't really want to get into this in full but I do have a video called two videos called why I don't like Black Lives Matter and I think police brutality is a real issue it's something that existed where I'm from uh, in Jamaica and that's also probably why I see it a bit differently because this isn't something that's limited to one race against the other it's something that shitty human beings do shitty and troubled that's not a reason to sympathize with them or forgive or anything but it's something that shitty people do. And just because there are certain horrible individual incidents does not mean that you can then make the claim. Even if there are multiple ones, you still have to take research, use a scientific method and prove your claim. You know, I was just pulled over the other day. But I'm not gonna talk about my experience. There are many incidents with people who are not black, who experience police brutality, more horrible than what I thought was very horrible with the mother. And I, I think they're trying to sue for a million dollars and I really hope they get a bunch of money. Um, and I hope it's a lesson to other cops out there who think they can get away with doing that. But the power dynamic between cops and just regular residents or regular non-cops, I think they're all civilians, but they're, they're cops and then also not cops means that you're going to have those incidents happen a lot. So it's very good to have give incentives so that things that were happening in that incident where he turned off his body cam, but say the, the body cam was working or that there's someone else there who was filming. I think that's absolutely great and absolutely wonderful. And I really hope that that family has justice brought to them. However, there are many incidents of non-black people who undergo those things and they don't get the same media attention. You could almost say it's unfair to them. And I don't want to make it into like a one group against the other issue because it's not. And that's how it's always being framed and that's not what it is. It's an issue of police brutality and that should be focused on. And it's a problem that many people may face. So I just wanted to say, that yes, it's horrible, but contrary to all, not all, but most, I would say like 80% of the media response that I was seeing to it, of making it into this whole Black Lives issue, <clears throat> that's a fallacy. <laughs> like that, you can't just take these incidents and then make it into, just fit this narrative of systematic oppression in this way systematic oppression through police brutality it's it's not that simple and i talk about these things in my other videos and i don't want to get into it now because it's 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 whole separate video so if you want more detailed input on why i say those things please go watch my videos that were censored why i don't like black lives matter one part one and part two um because i don't like them but i really hope that that family receives justice Okay, I think that's it. I just wanted to talk about these things and put some content out there that gave my thoughts and on current events. I'm also working on something else. 
and hopefully that comes out soon. I hope you enjoyed. If you like my content, if you'd like to see it get better, and if you'd like me to keep going, especially in this current time of censorship, then please consider making a donation at justthinkingoutloud.tv slash donate. You can pretty much give whatever amount that you would like to, and you can do it on a per video basis or just per month. And I prefer per video because I think that's more fair. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.